everybody to another meta soak behind the art interview today we have an extremely talented artist stacy bueller stacy i really appreciate you jumping on a call today of course thanks so much for having me so just to jump right in and and to kick it off how i met and learned about you was through spaces through ugly betty's and i <laughs> i bought one of your pieces there and i thought well, like wow this is like this artist is awesome it's kind of like you a little bit like an abstracty style to your art um mm -hmm. slash you know but there's still like a realist a realistic aspect to it because you know you can see the, the the person so there's like a cartoon style to it as well and that's how i first saw your art and i was like wow this this artist is extremely talented bought the piece and then i found your instagram with your photography and i was just like who the hell is this person <laughs> and i was like just scrolling through your stuff so to, i guess to kick it off like where do you draw your inspiration from across your your different verticals of art and are they kind of all of the same like is your ugly betty the path similar to how you approach your photography and just kind of curious to know where you draw your inspiration from in general oh well that yeah so with digital art i i started i grew up doing oil painting and i was like i, I did that for like seven years growing up i think i started at age seven and for me, it was always, I was drawing animals, painting animals, whatever I was into, right? I, I, that's what I was creating. And so I got really into fashion and I was reading these fashion magazines in college. And I started to be like, okay, this is like, this is something. And I realized now, like I played sports because of the uniforms and like everything I did was based on like how I could look kind of a thing. And I really quickly realized that as I got into fashion, that self-expression was really huge to me, you know? Um, and my biggest inspiration is my own story. And for my fashion photography, it's, it's my story. I, I do have influences of like Tim Walker, Irving Penn. Um, I absolutely adore William Wegman and you know um, I, I have a lot of photographers that do inspire me but uh, really just telling my story is my greatest inspiration and with painting and the digital art uh, I'm way inspired by Henry Matisse and Monet was kind of my first love um, I, I love um, Da Vinci like I mean you know uh, and Picasso, of course, is a huge inspiration. I feel like most artists say that. Um, but yeah, it's really, I take things that I love and I put it into my work. So visually, if I want my work to look like something, I'm taking elements from musicians and, and how their attitude is and their vibe. And then I'm taking elements of high fashion and maybe royalty in some photo shoots. and. I really like juxtapositions. I really like good versus evil, polarities. Uh, that's how I use my color theory, is all polarities and complementary colors. So, I mean, my inspiration really, it comes from all around me, but in the end, it's, I am my own inspiration. Yeah, I could, like, looking at your photography work, you can tell from the colors aspect, 
like how you draw out certain colors in your work is is awesome um i was mo looking at some of the pieces even there was one of like a woman and she was wearing um like lingerie i guess or, or a bra but the color also matched the column that was next to her i don't know if you did that on purpose or not but i saw that and i was like that's pretty sick like there was like <laughs> there was a little match i was like how'd you do that <laughs> i'm i'm huge into monochromatic i love anything give me all blue tones give me all red tones give me you know i love that shit i'm all about it is there a um i mean looking at the photography specifically or even you know ugly betty's ugly birds and that work that you you've done is there a piece mm -hmm. that you're most proud of across all of them is there one that stands mm -hmm. out like that's the one that's like that one means a lot to me yeah so there is this image i took in iceland in 2016 i believe something like that it's like right when i started fashion photography and so my grandmother got really sick you know like it started declining very fast and i like had what was my last conversation with her um i didn't know it would be you know we didn't really know but we knew she was like going downhill so i had this conversation where my grandma just called me over she barely speak and was like i love you and that's all she said was just i love you stacy and so I go to Iceland and it's me, my best friend assisting me, a makeup artist and a model. We go to Iceland for 10 days. On like day seven, we're driving through the most beautiful, it was the most beautiful part of the drive. And I get a phone call from my mother and my grandma had passed away. And I just got this feeling of just like, just an overwhelming feeling because me and my Nana were very, very close. And um, I just, as we were driving, I could just feel her spirit and we were driving on our way to our next photo location. So the very next image I took is my favorite image I've ever taken. And I planned it out meticul meticulously, is that the correct word? Um, it was planned, it was so planned. Uh, before I went there. It was at this certain lighthouse wearing this certain outfit and I knew exactly what I wanted her to do. Um, so it wasn't one of those things where I created on the fly, but it's this image and she's standing in front of the door of the lighthouse and it's an orange lighthouse and it's just vast. You know, it's like, that's the only thing out there is this little lighthouse. And she's wearing an orange outfit, so monochromatic again. It looks like it's out of a Wes Anderson film. And I just remember the way I felt when I photographed it made it my favorite image. Like, I don't think I could have taken any image right then, and that probably would have been my favorite image. But uh, this one ended up being it. Did, did the news that you heard about your Nana at, at the time justify or maybe persuade you to take the photo differently was there was there was that like a determining factor like certain things you did differently because of kind of that the emotions that you were going through at that time on that piece yeah so i did not spend long shooting i got the shot and was like i got it uh, uh that was one of the things i think we were there maybe five minutes oh, wow. i think i maybe took maybe a hundred images maybe if that which is you know that's about what i would take on a look uh now but that was the beginning i was brand new to photography so for me to only shoot like a hundred photos you know was uh, really minimal um but i created it just because it's one of the only times i've created and known like this is good you know yeah. in that moment i was like this is perfect it's just the way i wanted it it's the icing on the cake the cherry on top you know yep um yeah i just felt confident when were you in iceland that was 2016 i believe Got the it. end of the year that is that is one place that is on my list i had a colleague oh. that just came back from there their only comment was amazing scenery like ridiculous yeah. scenery but expensive Yes, fucking expensive. Oh my that, god! That was the second comment. I was just expensive. I was like, yeah, yes. they got to import everything. Um, yeah, um, Iceland is 
I didn't get to see the Northern Lights though. Ooh. And I was there at the end of October when they should have been there. That's prime time. Yeah. Yeah. And nothing. Well, you I go was back. so pissed. <laughs> I know. Now I'm going to go back because I want to show every loved one I have Iceland because it's really one of the most. Yeah. That it's... that editorial I shot in Iceland, top five editorials ever. I mean, like, that's that's the spot to go. I mean, that, that's on my list. I, I have to go there and, and see that. Um, I will tell you my favorite piece of yours. I've mentioned it in spaces before. The mm -hmm. um, I don't know why it just like always catches my eye is the lampshade one. Mm. The, the yellow suit, yellow background, pink lampshade. Yeah. And the story behind it's awesome. I don't know if you can share the story, but it uh, I, I don't know. I just love that piece. Thanks. Yeah, I'll share the story. So uh, I had shot an editorial the day before I took this photo and I went to the same studio the second day. And the day before my stylist had a lampshade and we didn't use it and she threw it away. And as I was walking into the studio, I saw it in the dumpster and I was like, wait, I'm doing a yellow on yellow outfit and backdrop. I think a pop of pink would look pretty fucking cool. So we throw it on her. That's one. I took one image and I knew I got it right when I got it. Um, and it was on film. It's 35 millimeter. And I didn't really know what it meant at the time. But uh, I was a closeted queer woman and married to a man and had never explored my sexuality. And I was raised Mormon, so I always pushed that away uh, because that's what they told you to do was like, if you have homosexual thoughts or whatever, you need to read your scriptures or pray and then you'll stop thinking about it if you do that you know so just something i didn't think about and that piece really is, is symbolic now because it it shows i was willing to die with that secret and i was going to i i really was going to die with that secret and i never was going to tell anyone and i would never you know um and i didn't realize that that was crazy kind of <laughs> you know <laughs> um and I, the whole lampshade thing becomes this that image is iconic and it's so symbolic of exactly who i was at that time which is someone who wanted to be bright who wanted to be out there who wanted to be themselves and and literally hid who they were to fit social norms or standards in my case it was mormonism and i created that at, at about the time that i was leaving mormonism and uh very very eye-opening now when I see that image and think about the person I was going to be, you know, and then you find out who you are. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, definitely. I mean, it's a beautiful piece and it has an awesome story, like a beautiful story behind it. So, I mean, it just makes me like it even more. It's just like one of those pieces that you just like stop and you just like stare at it for a while just to kind of wrap your head around it. Also, who would throw out such a nice looking lampshade? <laughs> Dude. It's like, I have no idea. That, I, a, it's a nice lampshade. It, I mean, to me, it looks like a, that's a nice lampshade. Like, I, I wouldn't just throw that maybe in the garbage. Pink isn't, maybe pink, hot pink is everyone's. Yeah, I get it. I can understand Interior it might, design style. Might not meet the room, but you don't throw that away. Give that to somebody who needs it for their apartment where pink works. Yeah, absolutely. Um, <laughs> So on the photography side, and, and a good friend of mine and, and uh, who I've done business with in the past um, has been in photography like his entire life. So I always, always love to ask kind of the specifics around, is there a favorite camera that you love? What's your favorite lens setup? Do you have kind of like your go-to? I know with kind of your fashion shooting, it's a little bit different than like real estate lenses, which kind of more go for a wider shot. Um, what's your setup? What's your favorite lens that, and, and, and kind of style that you usually go with? Yeah. Um, oh, I love this question. I love talking about this. Um, my favorite camera is a 35 millimeter film camera. It's Canon EOS 1V. Uh, it's actually like the last film camera that Canon had made. Um, and it's a sports camera. So it's super quick shutter. And okay. that's why I like it is because like I told you, I don't take very many photos and I take them quick. And uh, I don't like to stop with film. I still want to catch the model in a candid moment. So 
Um, I, I shoot with that camera and it's my favorite lens that I shoot on that camera is a 14 to 40 millimeter lens, super wide angle, but you can also, you know, crop in, get a little bit of that almost 50 millimeter. Yep. Um, and then on my digital camera, I'm shooting a Sony with a 16 to 35 millimeter. And that's, I, I shoot exclusively on those two lenses and those two cameras. I do like experiment with medium format and, you know, Polaroid. And I have a land camera that I really love, but they stopped making film gotcha. for the F100, you know? Um, so yeah, those are my two, my go-tos. Uh, if I could shoot film exclusively, I would, but as a fashion photographer, you gotta have backups, you know, just in case. Yeah, no, definitely. And especially, I mean, with, at least for my buddy, like his work, uh, you, you know, you have your go-to lenses and set up that you become just a master with and, and you just know how to work them. And you yeah, just it's like an it. extension. Yeah. Right. Um, also, I also learned from him lighting is that is its own art. When he showed me his lighting setups and how he did stuff and like, I was like, I didn't even realize this is like super involved. <laughs> and his lighting game was crazy when you have to shoot like diamonds and stuff. But yeah, like. I think people don't really realize on the photography side, like lighting is such like, that is just a whole class. That's a whole profession in and of itself, learning it proper is. lighting. Yeah. I mean, as a photographer, you will study light the rest of your career yeah. and you will never master it. You can, you can become close to mastering light, but there is no way you can really learn enough about light, you know, um, in training your eye, how to see light and then how to be creative and untrain your eye. You know, um, for me, I shoot on, I shoot constant lights, uh, because I switch between film and digital. So, um, most of the time I'm using, uh, in a small studio, like, a, a Godox SL 200 watt or something. Um, and I love constant lighting. I love daylight. I love that soft, soft romantic. But then I also love the harsh flash. I love a good flash, just a top camera flash. Like you're going out at night, shooting yep. at the club or something. I love that vibe. I think it's so badass. So those are probably like my two most common would be a really harsh light and then a really, really soft, misty kind of light. Are you, are you all about that golden hour? That, that time where you get like that nice, no, actually, no. Um, okay. I pretty much, well, the, here's why I don't like golden hour. Okay. I started out in wedding photography and it's all the people talk about is golden hour, golden hour, yeah. golden hour, golden hour. <laughs> <laughs> I, that's literally me right now. Hey, golden hour. <laughs> <laughs> no, but in wedding photography specifically, like you have a client be like, are we shooting at golden hour? Oh, God. <laughs> like, Sure, like, mm. <laughs> if you want to. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, but uh, I do like morning sunrise. Okay. I, I'm not so much an evening, but like get get it like right before the sun comes up, like just right barely before the sun comes over the mountain. You know, that oh, yeah. is a beautiful morning mist. Like That's... anything romantic or badass. It's like a it's like a mix between the two. That is. It's funny you bring that up. I did some drone footage in Brazil when I lived there for some surfers, and that was the perfect time. Like right before the sun, you see a pot popping up. You just get this like dusky look. You get all like just the pickup that you get is it's insane. Mm -hmm. Like nothing beats that. That is literally you, the only yeah. thing is you got to wake up early for it. If you're not a morning yeah. person, you're not getting it. But yeah, if you get a shot like that in that environment, it's it's so cool. Yeah, I I love it. It's like that to me they should call it magic hour or something or magic 15 minutes magic yeah. minute because yeah. you literally you got, have like yeah. 10 minutes. yeah <laughs> you, you have no time <laughs> yeah um sure. awesome so you mentioned before you actually started in painting then you went to photography so i guess what mm -hmm. made you go back from photography technically i mean you went back to painting with the the ugly betty series and ugly birds um yeah so what made you like what what made you dive back into it well in 2019, I took a month off of photography because I just, I was on a, a med medical medicine induced bipolar mania for eight years. And uh, 
So basically that means nonstop talking, no sleeping. I think I'm God. I get 10 times the amount done that I can normally get done, right? Um, and I, I, I thought I was always functioning at 80%. And then I took a month off of photography and I was like, holy shit. I have been sprinting for the past seven years of my life. You know, I, I did not realize how fast I was moving. Like in one year I had thir over 35 editorials published. That means I was shooting an editorial every other week. Like, I don't know how I did it, to be honest. Yeah. Um, and so when I slowed down, I started drawing and I, I didn't, I had nothing to do. You know, I wasn't working. So I was like, what the fuck do I do? And I had an iPad and I was like, you know what? Let's download an app. Let's see what happens. And I start drawing and my photo manager saw it and was like, these are like really good. You know, like you should do something with this. And then it sat on the back burner. And then I get into NFTs because this girl on Instagram saw my art and she's like, you should sell these as NFTs. And my manager had already been working on an NFT photo project called the Digital Archive. Got it. Okay. Right? And so I knew a few words and I was like, I know the word OpenSea. I'm going to go see what that is. So I signed up for OpenSea, made a Coinbase wallet and dropped on Ethereum because I knew the word Ethereum. And I dropped photos and I dropped some digital art that I had done in the past. And then my manager like saw that I did that and was like, why didn't you talk to me or ask me questions? <laughs> like, why did you just go went behind that? my back? Yeah. And I was like, well, you didn't tell me how to do it. So I just figured out how to do it. And um, really quickly, right, right after I'd gotten on, um, Keith Grossman bought one of my photos and my manager was like, Stacy, you're, you have momentum right now. You need to drop some of your digital illustration and you need to do like a 50 piece PFP collection. And so I was like, okay. <laughs> and I took three days. I drew 50 in three days Jeez. because I was on a mania. Um, I'm not, I don't know if I'm bipolar or not at this point, we're figuring all that out right now, but I was on a mania and just drew and drew and drew and created these ugly baddies and um, people really liked them and they sold out. And yeah. I didn't realize people liked my art. Like I just, you know, if I posted it on Instagram, it would get no traction because on Instagram, I'm a fashion photographer. Yep. But like in the NFT space, it's almost like switching. It's almost like people know me more for the digital illustration and less for the photography. And then you go to Instagram and it's like photographer and you don't really think about Yeah, that's art. literally so, what happened to me. Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. it's, it's kind of weird. Yeah. It's kind of weird to be like, wait, I'm not known for this <laughs> on yeah. this platform. It's weird. But it kind of makes sense in a way too, because the Ugly Betty series, it's also quality art, right? So like you. your background kind of facilitated that. So that's probably also helped you, like having your photography background, having your painting background when you first started, probably facilitated the execution of that really well because the pieces are awesome and it makes sense. I mean, everyone bought them, so they're sold out. <laughs> um, so I think that probably actually helped quite considerably. Yeah, for sure. For sure, yeah, I've just like, I've been like blown away that my digital art is selling like it's it really really just blows me away um but yeah you're right i wouldn't be the photographer i am if it wasn't for oil painting and color theory and composition like yep. i started photography i understood composition immediately you know um so i and color theory you'll see my earlier work is so colorful so colorful uses so much color theory gotcha. and um yeah, I, I wouldn't be who I am today with, I'm so glad I took those painting lessons growing up, you know? Yep. No, hundred percent. Art, it's like, it's the best, that's one of the best classes in school and one of the best classes you can take. Like that and like theater classes were just uh, so much fun. Uh, mm -hmm. And you learn a lot. Um, oh yeah, theater classes. Oh my God. Yeah. Stop it. 
I took an improv class in college, A plus. It was so fun. My, it was my favorite class. It was incredible. So much fun. Yeah. And you learn a lot too. And it gets you good at like public speaking and speaking. The yeah. what you'd be so surprised what you learn from things that you wouldn't think you would learn a lot and you actually wind up learning the most from it. Yeah. Um so moving out of photography and, and ugly baddies in that world. So what do you do outside of spaces and photography in the art world? <laughs> I go on a lot of drives in my car. Okay. I love to drive and listen to music. I love driving. I think I got it from my dad because my dad loves to drive. Um, so I'll road trip from Utah to LA once a month and do the 20 hours, you know. Oh, wow. I love it. Yeah, I love it. That's a serious <laughs> joy ride. It, it truly is. Um, and I, yeah, I love driving. I love hanging out with my my dog my animals i've got two dogs a great dane and a bulldog and they are epic as fuck that's the sickest combo in the game it, they really sickest they're the combo. best combo <laughs> that is the sickest combo short and fat tall and skinny yeah but you know it's perfect yep. uh, like i said polarities <laughs> i had i took care about my my roommate a few years ago his parents got a bull a um, great dane puppy and we took care of it while they were away for a few months it was awesome Took him out to like so Central Park, went running. I was like, this guy, he's probably slow. I could beat him in a race. And my friend's like, there's no way. So we took him off the leash and I started running and he flew by me. And then we got in trouble <laughs> for unleashing dogs. But um, I was going to say, they have Great Day meetups on 76 and on the west side, 76 west. Um, I lived on West Sunday. 68th. I didn't even know about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's um, a bunch of Great Danes. Like we used to go with, when I lived in New York, we'd take my Great Dane uh, on Sunday mornings, you know, like 7 a.m. And there'd be like 20 Great Danes all in the park and we'd all go on a walk. That is and sick. And it's like one of the coolest things I've ever seen was that many Great Danes all together. That like, is so cool. I didn't even know that existed. I got to tell my yeah. friend about this. That is actually sick. Yep. If you're uh, on the Upper West Side on a Sunday morning, just go into the park and you'll find them. That's incredible. Yeah, I'm definitely letting them know that. I wish I knew that. That would have been so cool. Yeah, it's awesome. So diving into the, now we're getting into the philosophical questions and I ask everybody, um, what's the best piece of advice you've ever received? Be yourself. I think someone told me that when I was young someone gave me this little bottle cap and it was like a cute cutesy like crafty thing and it just said you be you and this woman in my neighborhood came up to me and she said stacy that is you and i remember it just kind of clicked and i was like wait not everybody is themselves you know, I didn't realize people could be fake. I didn't realize you could like put on something because I've never been able to do that, you yeah. know? So I think it wasn't necessarily advice, but I almost gave myself that advice in that moment and was like, that's the coolest thing about you, Stacy." You know, like I remember thinking that is so cool. And that's the best, that's the advice I would give as well <laughs> is just be you. What's the worst advice you've ever received? Move to New York City. <laughs> okay. You want to dive into I, that one? <laughs> I've been doing photography a year. A year. And I'd been doing weddings for a year. And my business coach said, you want to be a fashion photographer, move to New York City. And okay. that's exactly what I did. I sold at my home. I had a house, like a four bedroom house sold all my possessions and I moved to New York and I struggled. And this was at the beginning of my mental health bullshit. Like when I was going insane and had no idea what to do. Yep. And it was the wrong time. It was just the wrong time. But honestly, if I didn't move to New York, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't be where I am today. So yes, it was bad advice to tell a 23 year old, sell your house and move your family to New York and pursue a dream that you've been pursuing for a month. Yeah. You know, so I thought that was pretty poor advice. 
uh, now that I'm older and I see that, I'm like, I don't think that's the advice I would give someone just starting out. Um, not every time anyways. Uh, maybe for some people you could see that they have that fire within them and they could do the New York survival thing in their young age. Yeah. But you know, at 23, it's, it's, it, 23, it's, it's tough. Yeah. In that, yeah, that city, that city, it puts you up to the test really quickly. It's sink or yep. swim. Um, and yeah. you find out really quickly if you're sinking or swimming. <laughs> yes, for sure. And like, Luckily, I I was able to um, get like a, a few really good jobs that were like really important for my career. And it was good that I was there for fashion weeks um, because that's how I've like really built my fashion career is by photographing street style and runway uh, in like Milan and Paris and New York. So that was also like really nice to be in New York for for that part of my job and i was able to make you know i was able to work with bnh photo and like speak or conferences for them and i was able to work on social campaigns for gucci and Miu Miu and like all of these brands that i never thought i could work with they're all in new york yep <laughs> and so it was actually good advice as well okay. because it it gave me a resume yeah. because i was in network. the location yep yeah. that's incredible um so if there's one in one artist within reason that we should interview next who would that artist be coco larry okay who is coco larry coco larry coco is she does like women's 90s video games like how do I describe it better than that? Because it's like Instagram's Coco Larry. Uh, it username on Twitter is Coco Larry C O C O L A R R Y, and her work it's like cool. It's rock and roll. It's bright colors. It's detailed, but also like bold. Uh, I see it. Do you see it? Yeah, I know what you mean. Like I. I genuinely think she is going sick. to fucking blow up. I think she's going to blow up. She yeah. she just launched a collection. She only has two pieces left from it. Um, I like. I don't know. I like. I feel like every girl in the world would want this <laughs> in their wallet. Yeah, this is pretty sick. And she does this all by hand. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's crazy. Okay. Well, that's the that's the artist if you were going to do a photographer matthew pandolfi okay well we'll do both of them then okay yeah her work's awesome um great so i guess just to wrap it all up um you know <laughs> tell us tell us what you're working on next where can people find you um you know we'd love to hear so we can just continue to follow you yeah, so you can find me on Instagram and Twitter. It's at Stacy A. Bueller. Um, I've got link trees with, you can find my website. You can find recent editorials. You can hire me. You can find everything on stacyabueller.com or always DM me. My DMs are always open for everybody on Instagram or Twitter. Awesome. Well, thanks again, Stacey. And everybody listening, if you have the opportunity, please hit up our Instagram and, and take a look at the Ugly Betty series. Her work is downright incredible. Um, you'll continue to scroll through her Instagram. Go try to find that that lampshade one that's my favorite. Go try to find the one that was the, the one that you shot in Iceland because, I mean, all of your pieces are truly incredible. And it's just a testament to, that you've really, you know, have mastered your craft and, and put the time in to really work on it. So I appreciate you creating these pieces and really appreciate you jumping on this series and talking with us. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. Definitely. And I'll see you in Twitter spaces. Oh, 100%. <laughs>